Hello everyone, welcome back to Universe Sandbox. Today I'm gonna be creating a custom system, but every single thing in the system is going to come from your guys' suggestions. So if you see, we have this wheel here and spinning the wheel will give us one suggestion that you guys left in the comments. So we can see our first suggestion is going to be a rapidly spinning planet with life. So that's the first thing we're gonna make in the new system. So it's completely empty right now starting, which is exactly how we want it. So let's just start with a random known star. Okay, this might actually be the perfect start. It's almost twice as massive as the sun. It's actually really, really big though. Look at it compared to the sun in size. Even though the mass is not quite double, it's almost 10 times as big, but we're gonna keep it. So this is gonna be the center of our system here today. And our first suggestion was to create a spinning planet with life. So if you guys would like to leave a suggestion on this video, just make sure you like the video and just put whatever you want in the comments. So next time I build a system, your suggestion will be in there. So let's do, let's start with a random rocky planet. I'm going to turn on the habitable view. So this is show us the Goldilocks zone. This green area is where we're going to want to put our planet. So it does change based on which planet you have, but we're going to leave it there. Okay. So the requirements for this one, it has to spin fast and it has to have life. So it might have life already because that looks like it's covered in water. So let's check. Yeah, 54% chance of life already just from doing nothing. That's really, really lucky. But I'm going to remove some of the water so it's more dry, but we'll still leave enough that life is still on here. It's still 51.6. And then if we go to the force tool, this tool right here, this will allow us to actually spin a planet. Okay, so right now on this planet, one day only lasts 7.6 hours compared to the 24 hours on Earth. So I'm gonna adjust this just very gently because if you spin it too fast, stuff will start flying off the planet. So let's get it right up to that point actually. I wanna see a little bit flying off. Also the water, the water is gonna start flying to like being pulled to the equator of the planet. And we should be able to see that already. I'm gonna go a little more. Oh, so you can start to see it already. It's almost making a ring around the equator made of water. So I'm gonna go a little bit more. Once things start flying off, that's how you know we've gone too far. Okay, look, it's like a, a perfect ring now around the equator of water. So this is spinning super fast. One day is only a little over an hour right now. Can we get it under an hour? No, 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 wait, go back, go back. Okay, so it started flying off. Stuff started flying off at about 1.2 hours per day. So if we speed up time now, will it cool down? Cause I slowed it back down. It should. Perfect. Okay. So we're back here with our water ring. So it looks like it still has like a little bit of lava on it because of all the stuff that flew off. Let's see our life likelihood. It's at 10%. So it still does have life. Okay, there we go. There's our first planet in this new system. And as usual, once I'm done with the system, you will be able to download it and look at it in your own version of Universe Sandbox if you would like. It'll be on the Steam Workshop. Link will be in the description of this video. So let's go back to the wheel and see what our second planet's gonna be. Here we go. Make a water world and a desert world binary. Okay, so that's actually a pretty cool suggestion. So you can see our system's pretty lonely right now. We're gonna need to add some more stuff. So a water world and a desert world binary. Let's bring them a little bit closer than our spinning world. We'll put them right here. Okay, so the best way to do this actually to get them perfectly binary is to make one and then copy it paste it and then make the other one. So they're exactly the same in mass. So this one will be our desert one. So let's just name it desert world for now. Then we save it. Then we can basically paste that object right next to itself. Okay, so these two planets are now binary with each other and we should be able to see that speed up time enough. You can see if we focus on this one, it looks like this one's going around it. But if we focus on this one, it looks like the other one's going around it, which is perfect. That means they are binary. So now let's make this one into the actual desert world. So I'm thinking of doing something kind of like Tatooine. So our main thing we're gonna focus on on the desert world is actually going to be these base colors, I think. So what does Tatooine look like? It's like orange-ish. It looks like, a, like sand. So we need like that sandy color. But what's actually really gonna help is turning this down. We might need to change our surface elevation map because a desert planet's not gonna really have a lot of craters like this. So if we can kind of get rid of that. Oh, okay, I kind of like this one. I'm gonna give it a little bit of water just so you have like, uh, you know, like your... So life is still available on here. Uh, is that spinning fast enough to bring it to the equator? How fast is it spinning? I haven't adjusted it at all. Yeah, okay, let's change the rotational period. Let's make it two days. So it actually is gonna take 
48 hours for a whole day cycle on this planet. Okay, so the planet has water, but it's not really visible. You can see a tiny bit and a little bit of these holes, which is actually perfect for our desert world. Okay, let's adjust the color some more because those kind of look not great. Here we go. Look at this. Okay, you can see the eclipse from the other planet. Let's give it an atmosphere. Oh yeah, check this out. Wow, I really like this planet. Okay, what's our life likelihood on it? 8.2, which honestly is pretty much what I want. What's our temperature actually? Okay, our average temperature is gonna be 20 Celsius, 30 Celsius. Cause there's gonna be spots where it's gonna be a lot hotter. So the average temperature is 86 Fahrenheit or 30 Celsius. But you can see around the equator, it's actually almost 50 Celsius. So it's really hot. And then it gets, you do get still frozen level temperatures up at the poles but I'm really liking that. Let's give it a little bit of a tilt. Oh, it does. Okay, so you're still gonna have seasons on this planet, which is good. And let's add a magnetosphere. Okay, there we go. You can see the magnetosphere there. I turned it on so it's visible. Uh, it is, okay, so our final desert planet is called Tatooine 2.0, and it has a 7.77% chance of life, which is not zero, so life could develop, but it's unlikely. Okay, so now that we have our desert planet, we're gonna want that binary with a water planet. Okay, so here is our second planet. Uh, what, what are we going to name this one? We're going to keep the mass the same on them so they stay in a perfect binary relationship. And immediately I'm going to start by changing the elevation map. I want something mostly flat, but I do want a couple of small islands. Let's give it some water. Okay, maybe something like that. I don't like the cratery look though. Like, see how you can see these craters? I don't like that. Okay, just a little bit of landmass like this is better. Let's change the color on that. Anything that's left here is going to be vegetation. So let's add that. So these, can you, you can imagine these little islands as like little rainforests. Okay, let's put an atmosphere on it. And I do want to try to get the life likelihood on this one a lot higher than the desert one. I think this is looking really good. How's our life likelihood? 56. Okay, I think I can get it a little bit higher if I change a couple things. We're going to set our rotational period to one day and set our average temperature to... It's set at 27.5 Celsius. That's kind of warm. We're going to set it to 18 Celsius. Okay, and then how does that affect it? 77% chance of life now. Okay, there we go. We now have a ocean planet and a desert planet binary with each other. Both of them can support life, but the water one's definitely going to be a lot better for that. Okay, here we go for spin number three. Make a planet that has no night, only day. Okay. So to make a planet that only has day, the easiest way to do that is to do a tidally locked planet. And what that means is the same side faces the sun always. So half of the planet's gonna have only night and half the planet's gonna have only day. So let's put it, we'll put it further out here and let's try to get it so that the side closer is completely burned and the side away is completely frozen. So it's like a split planet. Okay, this already looks pretty deserty. Uh, we should be able to just go into motion and there should be an option for tidally lock. Mm, yeah, right here. Tidally lock. Okay. So the planet is now locked to the star in the same way that the moon is locked to earth. We only ever see one side of the moon. We never see the back side of the moon. And that is how this planet is to the sun. So you can see if you lived right here, you can see that part is always in day throughout the entire year. These are years going by, not days. So that's a perfect start. And we should see, yeah. So if you look at the temperature map, you can see this is this, this is this side and it's way hotter than the back side. So let's add an atmosphere and that'll allow us to absorb a lot more heat. And that should help start burning one side. Here we go. Okay, so I added a thousand atmosphere layers to it. So to hopefully bring up the temperature on this side. Yes, it's working. So you can start to see molten rock forming. And you can also see that the back half, the back that the side that never sees the sun, you can see the temperature is negative 273 Celsius, which is absolute zero. That's the coldest anything can ever get. So it really is super hot on this side and super freezing on this side. And just to make that a little bit cooler, I'm gonna turn on a flashlight and I'm going to add some ice to the back side like this. Oh yeah, check that out. It's okay if I get a little bit on the front side cause it'll just melt. Perfect, okay. And then we can add temperature. Oh yeah, let's make it really hot over here. Okay, there we go. There is our split planet. Half of it is burned, half of it is cold. We'll play time even. Um, in a realistic view, you won't be able to see any of the ice really because it's all away from the sun. 
if you lived on this side of the planet, the sun would always be the same spot in the sky. If you lived on this side, you would never see the sun ever. Here we go. Make two planets collide. Oh no, I gotta pick two of our planets. Okay, so we're here. Wait, uh oh. Our, plan <laughs> our binary planets broke apart. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, well I guess we can just collide them then because if they won't stay in orbit, we're gonna have to collide them. What happened to Tatooine? This is supposed to be a desert world. There's ice all over it. Okay, I'm going to throw the ocean planet at Tatooine. Okay, so the ocean planet is all frozen, um, but let's see what happens if they were to collide instead of break apart like I guess they did. Okay, here it comes. Deep ocean into the desert Tatooine. We'll go slow motion here. Oh yeah. Okay, so it looks like the ocean one is actually slightly bigger in radius, probably because the water is less dense than the rock, but that causes it to be absorbed. Tatooine's absorbed by the ocean planet. Uh, let's see what happens after. Okay, all these fragments shoot out. Let's see if there is a planet left after this. Okay, there is. And because it had so much water on it, it could have life. 0% chance right now, but as it cools down, let's see, is it on its way out of the system or is it in orbit? Okay, so it's in an elliptical orbit, and look at that. Life likelihood is almost 70% now. Um, so it looks like life will redevelop on this new planet we made from combining two of the old ones. And I don't know why the water split like that, but that kind of looks cool. Okay, here we go. An ultra habitable planet that doesn't look like Earth. Okay, we can do that. Let's start with a random Rocky for this one. I'm going to put it between the spinning one and the tidally locked one. We're going to put it here. Okay, so to make it super habitable but not like Earth, let's make it a little bit bigger than Earth. We'll make it double Earth. It's 1.95 times the mass of Earth. What else can we do? Earth has a bunch of water. Earth is mostly water. Let's just make the water like a different color. So we're gonna cover it in water still because that is very important for habitability. But the water, we can make any color we want. We can make it have red water. Let's do it. Red water, and then what color land? If Earth has green land, let's make it blue land. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, what have I done? Okay, we need an atmosphere on it too. Okay, Earth has a bluish atmosphere, so if we give it a greenish atmosphere, how does that look? Something like that. This is, it looks so weird. And then what color should we make the clouds? We could do red clouds too, or like, I don't know, pink clouds. It just looks like almost if you took Earth and then inverted the colors, which I guess is kind of what we're going for. Okay, what's our habitability right now? 35.3, okay, we're gonna need to make that higher. Rotational period. We'll go one day. So we need to make it spin faster. So that should help. Yeah, 59.7. Let's make sure the temperature is good. Temperature looks good. Okay, I was able to get up to 60%, which honestly is pretty good. I mean, if I spent a long time, I could get it higher. But 60% is more likely than not life will develop on this planet, which is good. Um, so here it is. It's uh, not like Earth at all. Okay, here we go. Planet with binary moons. Okay, I don't even know if this is possible. Let's try it. So we're gonna need a gas giant for this because we're gonna need something with a lot of gravitational pull. So we're gonna have our first gas giant of the system. We're gonna go random gas giant. We'll put it pretty far out. And we're honestly gonna want this gas giant to be very, very big, as big as Jupiter or even bigger. So let's set our mass. We'll go 1.2 1, 1 Jupiter. So this gas giant has more mass in it than Jupiter does, which is exactly what we want. And the way, okay, to get this to work the best way possible, we're probably gonna want smaller moons. Um, worst case, we get a really big moon and then we have a little moon orbiting the big moon, but that's not really binary. I don't even know if this is possible. We're gonna, let's do random small moon. We'll put it decently far out too. We'll put it here. Then we're going, to, we're going to get another random small moon. Those look about the same size. We're going to go binary and we're going to see if this works. Uh, let's slow down time. Let's see if they can remain binary while orbiting that gas giant. Okay, it looks good so far. You can see that they are orbiting each other, not one orbiting the other. Let's make sure they can complete a full cycle. No way. I honestly did not think it would work. But that looks great, actually. So that is binary moons from a gas giant. I don't think you could get that to work super well with a smaller planet. Like trying to put binary 
moons on Earth would not work well at all. Oh boy, here we go. This might be the end of our system. Add a black hole to the system. If we do it right, we should be able to get it to be in orbit. We just need a small black hole. That's the thing. Lucky for me, I have saved a 10 gram black hole, uh, which I mean, it doesn't need to be that small. Okay, so here it is. You can barely see it. So what if I wanted a black hole that was instead of that small, we want, let's go 10 centimeters. That's crazy. A 10 centimeter, how big is 10 centimeters? That big? Something like that. That has the same amount of mass as 11 Earths. There it is. We can compare that. Look, here's a soccer ball. Okay, it seems to be about as big as a soccer ball, which I mean, what, that big? That seems like more than 10 centimeters. Um, so we do have a black hole in the system now. And just to make it fancy, let's change the color. This is not realistic, but we're gonna make it green. It is a green hole in our system and it should just be orbiting like a planet would. Yeah, looks good so far. I don't wanna destroy any of our binary relationships by speeding it up too fast. But there we go, a tiny black hole in the system. Here we go. Give a planet seven moons. That's oddly specific, but we can definitely do that. Okay, which one deserves seven moons? Probably our split planet, because it definitely needs some help. Just take a look at it. <laughs> that's honestly, it looks so cool, because there's like even water that's melted here. Okay, we're gonna give you seven moons. Um, and a ring system, because why not? Okay, here's your rings. And we need, okay, you're not super big, only like two Earths, so we're gonna give you seven small moons. One, two, three, four, five, six, and we'll do one vertical seven. There you go, now the split planet has a bunch of friends, so it's not burning and freezing to death alone. Oh no, explode a planet. Okay, which one of you shall we sacrifice? I actually love them all too much. Um, I picked the black hole. It's not a planet, but I want to see what will happen. So in tools, there's this explode feature. And if I just click on it, it should actually just immediately self-destruct. Usually when I do this, it makes a supernova, but this black hole is tiny. So let's see what happens. Three, two, one, go. Oh, it's still supernova. A tiny black hole still supernova. Uh oh, did it immediate? Did it destroy the system? Oh no, I didn't save it before I did that. Yeah, it's gone. Oh, never mind. <laughs> it was just right there. Uh, let's see what does happen to the system, though. I I thought I just destroyed everything. Let's see what happens. It may or may not destroy the system. Okay, so you can see the planets are starting to glow, which means it's definitely doing damage to the system, which is not good. Yeah, look, you can see streaks of matter being shot out. Okay, it just destroyed a planet. Okay, it looks like the rest survives, which is cool. Okay, that actually might've heated our deep ocean planet up. So now this system exists inside of this supernova remnant and look what it did. It completely bugged out the planets. They are broken. I glitched the game out. You're not supposed to explode black holes, I don't think. <laughs> Okay, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, the link in the description will be before the supernova destroys everything so you can still look at everything. But once again, if you have a suggestion for the next system, make sure you like the video and then just put it in the comments below. I read them all, don't worry. Join my Discord if you haven't. I'll see you guys in the next video.